Hello everybody and welcome back to week four of the KCM. Getting started here with Mong versus Best in game number one on Polypoid. Here we go. All right, Mong gonna spawn up here in the top right. Best down in the bottom left. How you doing, Shun? I'm doing pretty good, Sam. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Have you heard that Africa TV is going to be changing its name this year? No, I haven't. What's they changing it to then? They have decided in their infinite wisdom to change the name of Africa TV to Soup in 2024. That's correct. S-O-O-P. I wish that I was, but <laughs> Soup is going to be the new name of Africa TV. I don't know if they're going to change the ASL to the SSL or what's going to happen with that. But Soup will be taking over as the new name for Africa TV. It's uh, kind of a crackpot idea in my mind. Uh, I mean, that's my initial reaction too. I thought you were trolling me at first, but um, we'll have to see uh, if that uh, will roll off the tongue any easier in times to come. I'm, I'm, I'm still not quite seeing it yet, but it'll be interesting to see the, how the acronym ends up being as well. I don't know what an acronym it, it is for, or what, or what, <laughs> what it is, what kind of S-O-O-P, I can't imagine. Must have some sort of meaning in Korea as an acronym, but that's that's the idea. That's what we're doing. That's what we're going with from now on. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll have to figure out what those those letters are going to stand for later, because I certainly can't in my infinite infinite brain cells figure out what the O O and P could possibly stand for. They're also going to be changing the classic. Uh, name for casters in Korea has it's been traditionally uh, BJ right broadcast jockey That's what they've always called their casters they're going to be changing them to streamers from now on as well so I think they're trying to open things up more to the international audience uh, they want to change things so you know it's a little bit off-putting when they're walking around calling each other BJ but um I, I think they're opening it up to the wider audience, to the international audience a little bit in in that way. And maybe there'll be opportunities in the future uh, if they are trying to look towards a more international audience for more international voices, for more international content. It's a little bit surprising, you know, that they've recently also gotten rid of, well, not recently, but gotten rid of the ASL English cast. But now they're kind of pivoting this direction. I'm not sure what's going on over there in Korea. Well, we'll see. Maybe some opportunities coming up in the future. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, we've uh, we see uh, Best coming out with a little bit of pro press. Uh, the game against Mong currently cross map positions, and he's gone for the one gate tech build instead of a Nexus first. So not going to be getting any early economic cheese from uh, the Gorilla just yet. But so far, being a little bit annoying with this early pro press in Puma. And sending out best first here. Aren't the uh, other Protoss players afraid they might not get a chance to play? Or I guess sending out Mong is a uh, is a good choice to try and take down Best here. He's been showing some great PvP prowess. Might be just the man for the job. Oh, absolutely. I think um, Mong's probably one of the strongest TVP players we, we've got in, in this lineup right now. I mean, Light and JYJ, they're both great players, but JYJ is pretty weak against Protoss, and uh, Light's are better in TVZ as well. So Mong is the man to take down these Protoss powerhouses, I believe. Yeah, we saw how uh, rough it was for Light in the previous episode of KCM versus Bast really picked him apart well we are here on polypoid though now it's not one of those newer maps so i see we getting in here and scouts the robo not a surprise there but it's good to have that information yeah you always want to get as much intel as you can in the early game phases of the game um both both um can do quite a lot against one another in these early phases so and as a terran you're very rigid in what you can do whereas the protoss has a wide a range of versatility of things they can do so if you are able to be on top of your scouting in the early game being able to like min max your builds and navigate yourself to these early games slight edges and advantages can be a really big deal at the higher echelons of play because 
it comes down to like razor differences between the two sides and who's going to win these small engagements. Correct me if I'm wrong here, I think Best has really cut down on the number of Dragoons here. Like he's only got one or two, one or two Dragoons at the front. And typically, like a lot of players will go for, you know, four or five Marine push with a few Vultures and that would just destroy these two Dragoons, but... Right. And the third one comes out here. Um, he's going to be able to complete that wall. I guess Best had a better read um, than maybe I thought. Well, yeah, I, I guess also because it's cross map, maybe he just um, was a little bit hesitant to do some kind of fake double push as well and uh, didn't want to do that um, against Best, maybe. But uh, I guess Best, in a way, is a little bit a little bit of a gambler, though, because he can't know for sure that Mong's not going to go for that unless he's really confident about Mong's play style and how he's going to react to certain things. And maybe he's got a good read on Mong's mentality in this game and matchup, and he understands that Mong's not the kind of guy that's going to go FD push in a cross-map scenario like this, and he's making a small cut there. I don't know for sure. Yeah, it really felt like he was cutting goons for quite some time, and now he's just going to move out with all of his goons to go and start clearing mines. I mean, if Mong had a couple of vultures on the map right now, he could just run right in and destroy the entire probe line, but best maneuvering around the mines. Interestingly, he's going around the mines and heading up towards the natural. And what is the actual plan with this? This is so interesting to me that he's gone around these mines and now he's going to head over towards the natural. Like, what is the what is the purpose of not the killing these? He wants to kill the he tank. He wants to snipe the, the first tank. That's, that's all it is. He wants to get a surprise kill on this first tank. Yeah, but he's going to be caught by these. Uh, these but this actually still might work out for best, even though he's been spied now. He's going to still put on a lot of pressure now, and the tanks are on the high ground, so he can come in there, maybe kill this turret for free, and now maybe jump on one of these tanks as well. Here comes best surging forward, trying to get those disruption shots on those to try to take. Not quite getting connections there. A lot of misses there. Just one more hit, and he would have got the tank. Not quite finding it. So best a little bit unlucky there. Not going to be getting that tank for free. So because Mong had all those mines out there, I guess he felt like he didn't need this bunker. I see some vultures trying to run by into the natural, but it looks like they've all been picked off. This tank getting so, so low, but manages to retreat back up onto high ground, just barely saving that. We do not have siege mode here, but you can bet it's on the way right now. More goons coming across the map, and the bunker cannot complete. We really need to see this uh, siege mode finish up. There it is. Siege mode is done. He will be able to hold on from here. Mong, uh, excuse me, best backing away. Mong gonna throw down a bunker here, I think, at the front now. This is uh, an interesting way to start this game, and best pulling out some weird strategies here, some weird uh, tech maneuvers. Was not expecting that, just walk across the map uh, and kind of avoid all of the mines there. Yeah, I really liked it. As soon as like he started doing it, I kind of figured out what he wanted to go for. It's, it's very interesting that I wonder if he's planned that specifically because it's Mong, or is that is just maybe something they, they thought of like doing in general against Terrans, like when they do the, the mine expand kind of way of playing and they rely on the mines too heavily, if like doing the circumnavigation thing of like trying to surprise them with the four goons, because they're, they're going to cut on the bunker, like you say. So yeah, I wonder if that's like something that's been thought about outside of this game a lot, or if it's something that's been specifically prepared for Mong in mind. We, we like to joke about best being being a, a great ape, but showing some huge brain plays here so far in this game. And, you know, from the cuts at the beginning of the game, realizing that there's not going to be that pressure from Mong uh, to, you know, running around those mines and going for that tank snipe. It didn't work out, but he got a lot of pressure going. I think Bess is showing us some real, like, great preparation here and a really good understanding of this matchup. And he's going to be taking another base here. The fourth base is coming up while just kind of sitting and delaying Mong from taking this third. And Mong is going to take this third eventually. It's just how long is it going to take here? How much can Bess delay? Yeah, this is a much more uh, evolved version of Best that we're seeing here. This is much less King Kong and much more like Winston the Scientist Ape from uh, Overwatch series. So it's, it's interesting so far. I'm, I'm liking this development in this in this match so far. <laughs> it's like he got that um, he got that hat from uh, Futurama. Have you ever seen? You ever watched Futurama? Jun? Yes, the, the, monkey the little monkey. Little with the, yeah, and gets all intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. got his bowler cap on. 
He's got his little bowler cap on, and he's speaking so eloquently right now, and everyone's like, uh, Best, are you, are you okay? And he's like, yes, top of the morning to you, gentlemen. I'm just going to use some Reavers now. All right, this first Reaver going to go down. Nice shot there on the Marines, but Marines really not that valuable at this point in the game. However, that Reaver is a big loss. Best going to wall in over here on the left-hand side. Make sure that more vultures can't get any more harass going. There's still an opening at the bottom side of that uh, base at the center left, but I don't think that Mong's really interested in harassing just yet. He's really more intent on getting this third base up. And with the kill on that Reaver, I think he's going to be able to do that no problem now. Best popping out around a Zealots. Is he going to try and bust uh, onto the, this third base here? It's kind of looking that way. When you start seeing the rounds of Zealots coming out of... Uh, uh, best and he's got some shuttles and that speed finishing up it's it's looking like a bust oh uh, yeah and this is this is this is telltale signs of best back in his gorilla form i think the hat might have fallen off a little bit here saying because this is like just pure ape smash mode and he's so good at it doesn't matter how much you entrench this third base location he's going to come with lots of speed shuttles lots of speed zealots and just hit you hard like an, an anvil getting struck by thor's hammer like i don't know how he does it but he's so good at just bowling over these terran positions soon I think we've got a drop heading around the top side here from Mong, so that's going to come in right before this bust comes, and this might actually be huge from Mong. Like, getting these vultures in right as the bust is coming is going to be such a pain for Best to deal with. Best coming in for this bust. There's not enough vultures here, man, and this mine is going to get a huge connection, killing off a lot of these vultures. Best is cracking through this easily, but... A tank here. Can that siege up get a bunch of kills? I don't know if it's even going to matter. Mong is going to be shoved all the way back into his main. Yeah, this is not looking good for Mong right now. Big mine detonation and Netro expansion are taking out like six or so probes. That's a big win for Mong, but it might not be enough. Now Zealot streaming into the main base. There's a few Goliaths and there's a single siege tank left on the high ground for defense. It's not going to be able to afford him any hopes of surviving. GG finally called by Mong, tapping out already. The Terran's down to player, Sam. Whoa, jeez. Just watching Pest tear the head off of the assassin that was sent out from the Terran squad. You know, they picked him first for a reason. But it wasn't, it's not looking like a good strategy anymore. Terran's got to be shaky in their boots here with just JYJ. And of course, Light has the ringer there in the background, but their assassin's been taken out. How is Terran going to take any points or will they get any points on the board this week of KCM? We're going to find out. Ooh, well, best. Going to this next one. His opponent action down here in the bottom right on Dark Origin. I don't know what's the backup plan for Terran after getting, having Mon get taken out like that. Gotta be feeling Hope shaky here. Yeah, hoping for the best. And oh my god. Best going to pull out a uh, proxy gate here. Go ahead. I was going to say, although hoping for the best in this situation is kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, it is a little counterintuitive. We don't want to see Best you know, crushed through like he did in week number one, but he's looking poised to do so. With that big brain, he's got the bowler cap back on. He's going to be pulling out a proxy gateway here and action actually has the build to take this on yeah nice and uh action's a very um intelligent Zerg player he's gonna identify what the potential range of builds from the protoss player are gonna be on this map and he's identified that yeah i'm gonna just make a really early pool here and uh even do a little pro block uh with his drone as well here maybe yeah the probe feels a little bit early i think or late what, what do you think i guess it's a little bit late here or like a forge could be a gateway he's not 100 percent sure though trying to he's, he's tricking best right now a little bit though right like he, right. he he delayed best getting in here and seeing that this was the case so if this wasn't two gate 
At best, actually, he might be caught with his pants down because he didn't go in to check that this was a nine pool or not, right? But he's he's done. I mean, he's he's really messed up action here because he's forced the the uh, hatchery over to the third base, and this you do not want that hatchery at the third base in this situation. And you know, best even if he did get in the main and see and and saw the uh, the links being made. Oh my God, he's not going to see these gateways. Oh. Oh man, that's crazy. Okay, but even if he did get in there and see the the pool, I don't think that he would like it would it would make his build that much different, right? Like he would still be making zealots. He would still be going for this two gate. Um he sees that there's no natural now and action's got to be confused. He's looking for the gateways. He's going to find them. And will he be able to kill the the pylon here? We don't have any zealots out just yet and that's a lot of DPS. Okay, there's a zealot finally. He can dance around the links one at a time though, so he will kill this pylon before the other zealot pops out, I think. Yes, he does. So now there's only three zealots out on the map to these links. Probably going to be coming back to build a pylon. And the other zealot from the main base came up to help, but that might get surrounded by these links. Or... So he needs to be careful now. Best doing his, his, his absolute best. It's hard not to make that pun um, <laughs> um, to micro against these um, zerglings without getting these zealots surrounded. Because one, one zealot getting caught by these links could just be absolute disaster for best right now. I don't know why he didn't build two pylons at this these gateways. If this pylon goes down again, he might be just out of this game. Build another pylon. Thank you. Good God. That was scary there for a second. Lings are threatening to just counterattack and kill that pylon. And there's not too much Best can do about that. I mean, he's just got to kind of sit here and he just defend. I don't think he can send in Zealots to actually attack right now because he's going to lose his pylon. And if he does, like I said, that could just be lights out. Lings here on both sides. This is so much to control right now for both players. The Lings especially moving them around, trying to get good surrounds. And we're going to go like well beyond two, three hot uh, hot groups, hot key groups uh, with these links, the number that are actually coming out right now. Action going to start to take some damage on this hatch. Hasn't gone for the counterattack yet. He's going to just maneuver around these zealots here on the map and try to find a route in to actually hit that gateway. He can't really build a sunken colony right now, though, because the sunken is not going to... It's only going to defend one base. So if you build a sunken, you really have to build two sunken. You have to keep building links here. He's going to get a pre pretty decent surround on these zealots on the right-hand side, and picking them off is actually going to give him a huge advantage now. This is looking really good for action. He's got speed kicking in as well, so he can really start to abuse the lack of mobility of these zealots. And that's going to be really tough for best because he's now going to have to protect these gateways while feelings are surging their way to his main base right now. He does have a cannon just about to come online with a singular zealot to help support that as well. So he should be safe in his main base with some uh, good probe drilling. But he might get this zealot caught. He needs to be careful. Okay, action not quite pouncing on that in time, but... Uh, for the time being, though, it has so many Zerglings out on the map, so it'd be really tough for Best to commit to these attacks about losing all of these Zealots right now. And he's got two Zealots completely caught off and separated from the other five as well. He's trying to hit the hatchery, but he's not going to get good enough surface area on it to finish it off. I don't think all of these Zerglings are going to pour in now and just surround these Zealots soon. Beautifully done here by action. Look at this surround. He's going to be able to pick off every single Zealot here with a great efficiency. And now he's got so many Lings. He can definitely kill off these two gateways. And Bess is going to try something a little sneaky by sending two zealots around the top side of the, the, the third base there and try to get on that third and just kill the hatchery if he can. But Action's already privy to that. He's seen that coming. He's going to send his links back here. It's complete surround on these again. And look at how badly these zealots trade when they're completely surrounded. Yeah, the link speed really helps uh, out the links get good surface area and dish out a ton of damage that the zealots just cannot um, out withstand. And now, like even with the safety of the pylon and the gateway acting as SimC, there's just not going to be enough zealots left over. And he's going to just mop this up nice and cleanly. And that's going to be a really nice technical win here for action. GG. I think the Terran's going to be happy about this one, knocking out this Terran player, uh, this Pros player from uh, being a problem later on. Okay, best stepping outside of his comfort zone to do a two gateway proxy play. A little bit surprising there that he decided to go for that, but action punishes, handles that very well. That's a situation that I often struggle with is when your second hatch is forced over to your third base. How do you maneuver? a two well, gateway play and i think he did a really good job kind of 
showing how to do that. Yeah, he, he showed that, that you, you can't, like you said, you can't make Sunkens. It's, it's, it's all or nothing. We go pure Ling and we just out control him. It's not even micro at that point, it's control because it's, it's, it's micro in a macro sense because you're thinking about the, the large larger picture of the game state and how to best abuse, abuse the lack of mobility of the Zealots, right? Right. Picking off the pylon was a big, big move there. Getting that first kill slowed down the number of Zealots uh, being produced and uh, gave action the, the opportunity to overwhelm with uh, just constant zergling production so well played by him now he's going to be dealing with an eight racks here from jyj so he's going to have to pull some scv or some some drones here to deal with this scv because this is the closest spawn you can get on this map um and these marines are already being rallied across so action here is going to have a bit of a struggle he'll probably have to pull about five drones most likely now trying to get through here he wants to actually start the bunker but Really good job of putting that pressure onto the early SCV, making sure that he can't start this bunker unhindered. And he's actually going to force these Marines back for a time. At least until we get three Marines together, that's when things are really going to start to get hectic because those can kill a drone super, super fast. Yeah, I really like how Action only started with like one drone initially to delay the SCV and then a second drone to guarantee the delay of the bunker, then gradually went up to six drones to now start to surround these Marines. He's trying to do it at the bare minimum. Gets on top of this like straggling marine though with these four drones and picking that off is going to be huge. And already the rush not looking super stellar for JYJ. He's starting to throw down a, a, a safety bunker here and he'll make a leapfrog bunker towards the hatchery in a moment. Uh, which will maybe force a sunken out of action but he, he has enough lings out right now that he might just go up to 12 lings and counter this hard he's yeah he's gone all the way up to 12 lings to counter this hard right now yeah we are going to get inside the bunker and with two scvs it's a little bit tough to break through here especially once they've healed each other up once they've repaired each other um coming out with one marine but you can see that jyj's not got his heart in this he just wants to a force a reaction and he's gone into a command center behind this gonna get this around here trying to stop these scvs from repairing their scvs are not even going to repair they're just going to force some attention and then pull back oh can he get this one drone wow great micro there to get that but return kill as well from action picking off that scv on the retreat Wow, really good move commands from both players here. Like, the great... The good, it, not only was that um, SEV on a, a good move command, he did that on a diagonal angle, which is hard to line up well. So, yeah, really stellar execution from JYJ. But likewise, Action is on top of things himself. And one of the best in the business is Action. Like, he, he's a he's a macro player, but he's one of the most aggressive macro zergs that there, there are. So he, even though he's, he's a much more eco-focused player, he's very good at his unit control and focusing on the, the small engagements. You can definitely see that there in that last engage. And Action has added on a bunch more drones here, but he's starting to pump out some lings. I don't think he wants to build a sunken here. I think he wants to get into uh, speed kind of early on and control the map and try to pick off some marines if they start to move out. Oh yeah, he's got a lot of lings here. He's continuing to produce this. He knows that there's a wall, but he's thinking that JYJ is probably going to pull the trigger on a two racks follow up. And once this two racks comes out here, he's going to try and dive upon this, kill all of the Marines and try to win with just a follow up Mutilus push. Yeah, uh, the, the idea is that around five minutes, the Terran's going to be coming out here to put on a lot of pressure and force Sunkens or additional links. And instead, we want to put on the pressure and just crush him. But it looks like Ak Action just wants to kill the depot. He thinks that there's, he thinks that there's enough DPS to kill the depot for the SCVs come off the line. I'm not sure he's calculated that correctly. He will get the depot, but there will not be enough links left over to kill the the Marines. So I'm a little bit confused about that. He has supply blocks JYJ, though. So maybe he's considering that possibility as well. He wants to be as annoying as possible here. But I don't know if that was worth it. He's going to now come in here and delay this depot going down and be a little bit annoying. Maybe he's just trying to get value out of these lings and he assumed that JYJ wouldn't come out. But I'm so confused by action right now. I really feel like he should have just waited and not gone in for this. I guess he didn't think that JYJ would come out for some reason. Oh my god, that was one of the worst things I've ever seen. What are we looking at right now, Shun? That was brutal. I'm confused as well. Yeah, I was I'm really confused as well. I'm really confused as well. I knew he could kill the de the depot, but I, I still don't understand the decision making because he can't afford to bleed these links because he's risking counter attack and he's then might be forced to make more links or a sunken when he needs to make muters and that's not good for him. 
No, and I, I think JYJ is just gonna wait for a second Firebat here and move out. There's no way you can uh, you can fight that. Look, he scans. He sees Lings. Wait for another Firebat, and we'll go. And there's no way you're gonna be able to take on this army. That is just a deadly, deadly army for Zerglings to try and uh, take a fight with. And JYJ looking like a shoe in here to win this game. I don't know if we have uh, range yet, but. He might have skipped that, I'm not sure. Coming back just to make sure that the counterattack can't come through, that would kind of be the only thing that could really ruin his day, but he's got that small gap in his wallet. He's forcing two sunkins. After all the lings we've produced, Shun, you know just as well as I do, he's yeah. not going to have any mutas at this point. This is rough. Yeah, he's going to basically be on um, macro mode. Like, he's not actually going to make that many mutalisks. He's kind of catch some of these marines, these links, just going to help him out a lot. If he can prevent any more bio coming out to the main of the main, the main of the map right now, that's actually going to be, get this round. It's actually, this could work out for him action right now. This is actually kind of working in his favor. If he can keep these links getting some damage and he'll pull all the bio back, it means that he will now be able to drone up a little bit and hopefully get up to the mute account that he needs. And delaying this tech is really critical. He's getting a few uh, SCV kills, delaying the starport, being really annoying. Maybe get through these marines as well so it's actually a nice little win here for um action and slowing down some of the mining time and frustrating jyj while he gets stabilized because he would, will not be able to produce that many muters for quite some time so he'll very slowly go up to a muter stack suitable to fight um JYJ here, but he, he actually JYJ's evacuating his wall, which is a big mistake. Now he's opened up his natural, and J actually coming with more links here. This is crazy. I can't believe JYJ is throwing this hard. Absolutely insane. If he had just attacked the natural, you know the the sunken colonies weren't even started. It was a creep colony that was on the way over there at the at the natural, and he could have just busted right through. Uh, to hell with this zergling counterattack, but he went all the way home. Just to deal with those six Zerglings that managed to get into his natural. And now, with moving that wall and just kind of chasing around the Lings inside the main, losing random Marines, JYJ is looking just about dead here. It's crazy how hard he's thrown. Honestly, doing nothing would have been better for him. If he just stayed in base with his units and didn't do anything this game, he'd be in a much better position. It's kind of crazy what's, happened, what's transpired, and I'm kind of speechless as well. Um, one, he is going for Valkyries right now, so there is a chance that he can stabilize. He, he's, he's going to have to evacuate this natural completely, fight the CC. There is a Valkyrie timing coming here in the next um, 40 or so seconds, so he will eventually get a Valkyrie out and will start to challenge these muters, but for the time being, he's taking a lot of damage. He is catching these muters, though. Big! What is going on what? in this game? Action's paused. Is there a, uh, an issue? I'm so confused right now in this game. This there's, is the most craziest game of all time. What's going on right now? There's got to be something weird going on right now. Something out of this world had to have happened. He didn't even happened. say PP. He didn't even say PP, so that's a keyboard issue. Something's, something's weird is really going on in this game. It feels like both players have lost the script. <laughs> both players have gone off script. Can we just restart and reset and do it all over again? That the, is wild. The, the computer chips in their brains have malfunctioned. They're going to have to take them back for tech support. We've got Samsung on the lung right now. They're, uh, <laughs> they're running diagnostics. They're going to try and get those processes working back at full capacity, but slight issues at the moment, guys. Just bear with us while these superhumans get back, on, back in shape. All right, we're back. Action resume the game, I guess. Uh, I get. I mean, we had a pretty long break there, and I guess these players went to the bathroom, splashed some water on their face, and got back into it. Like, what? <laughs> what have we been watching? I hope it was holy water saying, because I have no idea what would just happen, but it was possessed. Oh, there's there's been so many crazy mistakes in this game, so many errors here, but action seems to be coming out on top slightly. He's going to get this Valkyrie. Really great pick off there with the two Scourge and JYJ just not reacting with the Marines to try and pick that off or try to stop that from occurring. And I mean, action extending his lead here. He's got the... Uh, Carapace upgrade on the way now. He's going to have Lurker in a second. And JYJ is just light years away from you know, having Irradiate out here to actually deal with that. He's taking, he's retaking yeah. his natural, but th this is, this is rough. This is really rough. 
He has to catch all of these Valkyries one at a time with these pairs of Scourge over and over again. I, he got the first Valkyrie. I don't think he's going to get the second Valkyrie so easily. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure JYJ will just use it as point defense now and will protect it with the Marines and support. So it'll be very difficult to snipe this Valkyrie for the time being unless he makes a micro mistake here. So he, he, he will struggle to break four Sunkens, but right now there's only three. And these are five medics right now. So he can easily bust through this as long as he uses the, the Valkyrie as point defense. So here goes JYJ for the stim and go. Targets fires the bottom sunken colony. Here come the, the, the mutants from behind. Snipes off the Valkyrie with the Scourge. There's only four mutants remaining, but the Sunkers are going down so quickly, there's no way they'll be able to stabilize. The Lurkers are going to be the only hope now for action to kind of save him in this game. I don't think it's going to be enough. He's going to be able to come in and start cleaning these drones. Here come the first two Lurkers. One gets targeted. Down. Scan goes down. Targets the second Lurker. GG finally called by action, saying absolute pandemonium in this game. Wow, and that was the last moment I think that JYJ could actually take that game because Action was about to get into his late game. If those Lurkers had popped to protect that sunken line, I think that JYJ would have been just about out of that game. He lost so much. It had such a hard time dealing with the early Lings. It was falling further and further behind, but the last chance buzzed through the three sunken colonies. He makes it happen. He takes that game. I don't even, I don't know what to even say about this one, Shun. Like, yeah. This, this, this is a write off. This is a complete write off of a game, I feel. Yeah, there was a glitch in the Matrix, guys. We're going to be back with the, the regular programming in the next game. Just stay tuned. All right, Bisu getting sent out next year. We are on this new map. What's it called again, Shun? Uh, Blitz Y. That's right. We've got that catwalk map. And uh, here in PVT with JYJ down in the bottom right. Let's see what kind of plan he can bring out here against. Yeah, this map, I was going to say, this map is uh, basically, it used to be called Blitz X. And it's basically the same map, but rotated 90 degrees uh, uh, to the right. So. Yeah, instead we've got these vertical bases with this like catwalk on the right hand side and a big wide open left hand side of the map as well but there's a very quick rush distance here and we're going to see a lot of a uh, uh, pressure out of bisu right away going to be putting a gateway just outside of a uh, jyj's natural expansion and get the zealots going early this is something that we see all too often with new maps is that protoss likes to get aggressive in the early game um, because the, the terran players are never quite uh, comfortable until they've really played a lot of games on each map, until they've really mapped everything out. So we'll be taking advantage of that here. Bisu looking for that early damage, and he's going to get the gas deal as you do on a two-player map. And JYJ is not going to be too phased by that, I think, but he might be phased by this this uh, gateway placement, how close it is. It's going to have a zealot in his main super quick mm. yeah with the mineral optimizations you can disguise this gateway first because he's doing the very standard uh, gas steel timing so it doesn't look strange the probe coming in there at this time and stealing the gas like that there's no way he can know for sure that this gateway is here so he's going to set out an sev scout to confirm that and in fact the sev is going the wrong way he's assuming that it's over here on the left and he's not going to see it he's going to be wondering like, hmm, what's going on here so, it's, so he's going to see it at the very latest moment possible but he still will eventually find that and he's going to have the bad news now that it's going to be a zealot in a moment kind of be coming its way into the main base and he's going to um, have only this one hole to micro with on this with this barracks and depot underneath his cc one marine and one hole to micro with it's going to be a real challenge here i can't remember how many hits it is to kill a zealot what was it like 33 or something like that i can't remember how many exactly but he has to deal with the uh, assimilator and at the same time the zealot. Now a second marine popping out. Bisu not really going for those SCVs or trying to hit these marines just yet. He's waiting for a second zealot so that he can hit from either side of that hole. Make it harder for the marines to micro against him. And there's another supply depot going down to make sure that he's got a secondary a backup hole to kind of back away into. But uh, it's still going to be rough here. Oh, he just barely lost that fight against the probe. And JYJ going to pull the SEVs. A great block. Keeping both of these zealots out. And funnily enough, Visu going to get almost no damage here with these, th this uh, forward gateway. That's a little bit surprising to me. 
Yeah, I mean, he still can come in now and kill this SCV and put on a little bit of forward pressure here. This is three Zealots. There's a lot of HP to chew through. There's only a few SCVs, so Shpisu is still going to be coming in and doing a lot of damage to these Marines. A little bit of miscalculation here from JYJ. There was a low HP Zealot. Didn't get targeted down properly and just caused absolute mayhem for JYJ. And he's going to maybe get this. Oh, if he's not careful, doesn't get that. So that's one small win for JYJ. He might lose another Marine here if he's not careful. This is probably the best case scenario for Bisu, considering how badly it went initially. And this is going to compensate um, quite considerably for him and give him a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of time to uh, transition into a more normal game uh, while he's applying this pressure. Yeah, he can keep sending in units here. He can keep trying to delay this factory as well as going down in the bottom side. There's only three Marines. So with two Zealots, you can still put on that pressure. We should have a bunker coming up here. Oh, another Zealot going to come in and stop this bunker for now. This is getting pretty painful here for JYJ with only four Marines and some of them are badly hurt. Going to lose one of them already. And a four, another Zealot going to make its way in here. So this is becoming a real problem. I mean, eventually we're going to get a, a Vulture out here, but how much more damage can get done by Misu before that happens? Uh, I, I mean, uh, quite a lot by the looks of it, because he's still going to be delaying this bunker going up while well, killing these SEVs and forcing more and more Marines. The factory is only just about to become finished, and such a long time for JYJ to finally get a Vulture building, and he's still going to be losing SEVs, desperately trying to get this bunker up. This is worst case scenario for JYJ right now. He had a really good stabilization um, moment there, and then he just completely lost it. Well, this is really interesting to see how Bisu's kind of played this out, is him not really like forcing the issue early on waiting for a kind of a critical mass of zealots and then just busting up the ramp even through the initial uh, scvs blocking now that the vultures out here we're going to try and target that down with the goon but we should be able to repair through that and surround this goon oh great moves here by jyj to get that goon to dance oh a zealot here in the uh, mineral line though getting a couple of kills he's just out of control right now. Bisu cannot be stopped. Yeah, JYJ's down to 21 supply. Now he's got um, two Dragoons at a time being produced. And they're going to be uh, knocking down on the front as well. This Vulture might not even be able to get out as well, saying this is the worst case scenario. More and more for JYJ. He's still in the game. He's still got a puncher's chance, but he's lost so many SEVs and Bisu's now throwing down his uh, Nexus at his natural. He will be able to transition into a normal game from here. He doesn't have to kill JYJ. Yeah, by any stretch of the word. So, very comfortable game going forward here for Bizu. This is pure pain for any Terran player watching a, that many Marines and, and SCVs go down uh, to this early Zealot harassment. And he's trying to sneak out here, but there's no way you're sneaking a Vulture out past these three Dragoons. And Bisu just going to contain him for a bit while going into that Robo play. And that should be the finisher here because JYJ is just so far behind. It would be shocking to me if he managed to make a comeback from this position. Yeah, he's making the CC on the high ground in the main, so eventually he will get his expansion up and running, but he's not going to have the same kind of curve that he needs to deal with Bisu. And Bisu can also just come in here and pounce on this tank if he was to try and take this expansion too early as well. So the timing of JYJ taking this expansion is going to be very awkward for him. He will try and maybe get some shots off on these Dragoons from the high ground maybe with the Siege tank, but he has to be very careful because at any moment uh, Bisu could just pounce on this. Yeah, got to be super careful here. Should have uh, Siege mode on the way. That's the only way he's going to be able to get this uh, expansion, and it's not going to allow him to do any sort of counterattacking. You know, if he had maybe a uh, Vulture Speed or something, he might be able to get out and do some counterattacks, but then he would not be able to take this natural. So, oh, running forward here, he's going to try and get one of the tanks. Uh, tanks. Oh, some really good miss shots there, actually. A lot of miss shots from Bisu, and he loses a Dragoon. That's actually best case scenario right there for JYJ, but even that is not going to kind of bring him back in this game right now. No, Bisu was basically playing the slot machines right there. He was seeing if he would get lucky with a few hits, and if he would, would get lucky with a few hits, he'd commit to it and keep taking his pot shots and hoping for those lucky sevens. But since he couldn't get any good holds on there and there was enough missed shots, he decided to just pull, uh, stop pulling the lever and cut his losses. And so he will back off here, but... Shuttle is coming across the map shortly with that Reaver, and we don't have any turrets yet. Oh, there's one turret there on the on the ramp, but uh, a Bulldog play is on the table here, and I think the Bisu will probably try it. He's got quite a few units out, and he's not 
uh, signaling that he wants to take a third base just yet. So this Reaver plus Shuttle plus the Zealot in there and all these Dragoons out in the front, I think that they can bust through the three tanks that JYJ has been able to scrape together here uh, with a couple of turrets to defend them. Looks like he's got that fourth tank out now. Right, trying to reposition. I don't know if there's any positioning that you could make with these tanks that would actually be good enough to hold off, off this uh, this incoming attack. No, it feels like uh, one of those like chess puzzles that's impossible to solve or something. And it's like just trying to troll you into thinking that it's winnable. Here comes the bus though. Siege, Siege tanks unable to really deal with this Reaver and Zealot on the high ground while the goons pour into the natural expansion, taking about both of those Siege tanks in short order. Just two tanks remaining and one of those will die too. The Scarab Bunkers also now having to do a drill from the SCV is going to block these goons from getting on top of this tank, but they might still be able to pick it up from the high, the low ground anyway. And they're still getting shelled on this bunker. So the Reaver going to be taking that out. And now there's just a few desperate hope and prayer of these SCVs. TVs and Marines trying to hold it up. Not going to be enough. JYJ going to be tapping out. GG finally cool. Wow. Bisu. Bisu with that brutal early pressure. Tearing apart JYJ. And then yet another Terran player goes down in this week of KCM. Will they have a hope? Will they have a prayer of taking home any points? We're going to find out. It's coming right up. Okay, Zealot going to come out next here on Apocalypse, taking on Bisu. And Zealot is not the a Zerg that I would want to see taking on Bisu. I feel like Bisu going to be able to take apart Zealot here. Um, I mean, there are some things that can be done, of course. There's some buffs that could be efficient that could take out Bisu in the early game. There could be some... You know, laying all in or whatever that Zealot can pull out here, but Bisu is just so, so solid in PvZ, and he should be able to hold on and kind of suss out all of the cheesy plays that Zealot can pull out, it, just in my opinion here. Well, you'd look, yeah, I would like to think so. Um, he he's basically the OG of PVZ. You know, he's the guy that basically designed a lot of the ways of thinking and meta engagement with the matchup that we see in the modern times. It's just been more adapted as the times have shifted. His build and his style has been, you know, kind of revamped over the years, but it's still more or less the same idea and just uh, going to be a little bit more optimized to suit the meta as time progresses. But he's the guy, he's the OG that designed how to take an expansion early against Zerg and how to not die and how to navigate this very tricky early game to be able to weather the storm of the, the imbalances of this matchup and really start to turn the tables on the Zerg. And he's going to get his probe in here first, first scout able to stop the natural from going down in the correct place. So Zealot already forced to have a little bit of an uncomfortable position here. He's going to make, I think, four Zerglings at least. And that's a good thing because we do have a gateway. He did not scout with a drone. So he has no idea about this gateway first. And the Zealot that will be following this up. But probably have a pretty good idea of what's coming when you see the probe being this uh, focus on harassing your drones, trying to get some damage onto them so that the Zealot can follow up with some kills. Yeah, the thought process here is that you either drone scout and make two links when you see that it's Forge, or you make four links and don't drone scout. And Zealot's one of those players that doesn't drone scout, but he always makes those four links. So, but look at this, Bisu hiding this Zealot that's on the middle of the map, and that's going to throw Zealot off his timings, because if he starts to assume that this is Forge expansion, he's not going to be making any Zerglings right now, or certainly not any beyond six or so. So right now, this could uh, trick him a little bit if uh, Bisu sneaks in with a Zealot. Yeah, there it is. Two drones popping. And he just saw the uh, gateway there in the natural. So Zealot starts a couple of lings, but it's going to be a little bit late. And actually, Bisu backing up here. He's not going to take this fight right now. It's a little bit sh surprising. I thought he would be, you know, trying to find a little pocket, little spot to, you know, hide behind a mineral patch or something. Maybe try to make his way into the main, but... Instead, just going to back up, sending all his zealots back towards his home. He's going to link up here with the other two and maybe go for another push. I'm not sure what's uh, the plan now from Bisu, but the plan from Zealot is clear. Hydra bus is incoming. 
Mm, it's, usually the, the zealot timings are always in odd numbers, so it'll be like a three zealot timing, or a five zealot timing, or a seven, nine zealot timing. Rarely you'll see an even amount of zealots out on the map at any given time, so this time is going to be the three zealot push coming out from Bisu, making its way to sort of third base location. Can squeeze behind the minerals here and harass these drones. It'd be really annoying, and at the very least delay any mining being done at this base. And it's a really uh, annoying situation for Zerg to have to lose out on any mining timing at all, and if you lose just even just a single drone it hurts so much it hurts so much and the fact that he can see everything that's popping out of the hatcheries here is so painful i don't see ling speed either so that's going to tip off bisu in a pretty big way you don't see you don't see the uh don't see the ling speed and you're not able to get in to to confirm i mean bells are ringing right now for bisu and actually he sees a hydra this is exactly what yeah. i was talking about seeing the hydra pop out of the third base that's brutal now he knows exactly what's coming here he's going to keep putting on the zealot pressure and continuously build cannons back at home yeah the zealots coming on the map will stop these zealots behind the mineral line being targeted down by this hydra and rs so now um Bisu will be keeping this base being delayed from mining for quite some time. Uh, we'll eventually either try and do a, a synchronized attack here and try and get get him while these zealots are being dealt with. But for the time being, it looks like he's actually just going to uh, sacrifice these zealots and just try and bait an attack into them from here and delay the delay zealot coming out onto the map and delay his bus for as long as possible. He's also going to see the timing of the speed finishing and just how many hydras are being produced. He's going to trade as many of these zerglings off as he can and it will just take the wind out the sails of Zealot if he was going for a bust. Yeah, I think Zealot will have to transition here. There's no way he's just going to keep going for a bust. If I had to imagine... Yeah, there we go. We have a layer on the way. I think we're going to have another hatchery coming down. Um... I think he's just going to go for a wall killing ma maneuver here. Well, the cannons are connected to the wall, which means you do not need range to do to, to kill this. So he will he could run up to the wall, snipe the cannons while the lings soak. But the problem is, is that there's not enough lings to soak um, the, the zealots on the wall. So this is not a good trade for zealot to take. So he won't go in there and, and try this. I don't think. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of cannons. The cannons are pretty late here from Bisu. Which is a bit concerning, but with this number of zealots, you can definitely buy that time. He's going to go for the wall for now. Trying to get some damage with this Corsair as well and seeing how many Hydras are joining the fight here. But I don't see any more hatcheries back at home either. Maybe Zealot going to continue with this? Um, he's actually adding on drones now. Drones being transferred over towards the third base and an evolution chamber coming down so yeah he will be transitioning it's just a little bit late on these hatches yeah it's just going to be a very sort of like uh, un un not optimized five hatch hydra uh, transition here he may actually consider busting with four hatch hydra he may try and make it look like he's transitioning and build up a really insane amount of hydras and do some kind of play here it's also possible because bc will probably not add on any more cannons he may have even cancelled some of the cannons that were building if this corsair was identifying the timings of these hatcheries but he delayed placing this fourth hatchery it bc yeah bc didn't cancel any of the cannons so there are there's only five so as long as his if his templar timing is slow there is a window here for zealot to come into four hatchery worth of production and just still kill him and as we can see the templar is only coming online now so yeah it looks like there's still a window for zealot to kill him here but it is a small window but he's, he looks like he's just transitioning though he's been going all the way up to five hatcheries so he's either telling bisu that he's transitioning and don't be scared and he will go for the bust or he's actually transitioning i think he's actually transitioning that's a lot of drones here uh, he's going up to yeah, like full like saturation it. and um uh, with full saturation you can produce off of a full six hatcheries no problem even a seventh hatchery can be added on at times so there's a sixth hatchery uh putting them all at this third base is kind of funny um but i mean it does have the the benefit of being able to just box select and make all the um the larva into hydras at the same time although a uh, Zealot timing is actually coming out here, and we don't have too many Corsairs. He's just been fully producing Zealots this entire time. Zealot will have to re uh, kind of weather this storm here. He's got Lurkers on the way, but they're not going to be in time for this attack. He can probably make a few Lurkers in front of his army to actually slow things down. Um, he's going to retreat all the way back here into the natural. He's making a Lurker right in the midst of this. This is great. 
Having the Lurker there is fantastic, but the Zealots managed to slip by, getting on top of these Hydras here in the main. The Lurker going to be sent in, trying to get that into a position where it can actually fight. Does a lot of damage to that, just 31 HP left on this Lurker. He better keep that burrowed. Oh my gosh, he's actually falling apart here. He's going to lose his Hydra's den. He's losing all the drones at the natural as well. Yeah, this is really bad news for I don't think this is a recoverable position. Yeah, he was trying to be sneaky and go right into Lurkers and defend the Zealot push with the Lurkers, then set up a contain and win in a tactical way like that. But Bisu just stomped him before he got set up and he hit him just before the eggs of Lurkers were hatching. So we weren't able to benefit from that like tech choice of rushing into Lurker. And now Bisu's done the damage that he needed to do. He sniped the natural hatchery, he's killed the den. He's even getting drones in the main after killing all the drones in the natural. So everything's going right for Bisu in this game. I'm not sure if Zealot can recover. I think it's an unwinnable position as long as Bisu doesn't make any major blunders here. Yeah, for sure. And Bisu won't make those major blunders. <sighs> yeah, it, it's really rough to watch because I feel like he could have held this off had he built lurkers in that uh, the, the little gap into the main yeah. base from the main and natural if he had blocked the zealots out and got that lurker underground uh, he might have been able to hold off this zealot attack keep that natural alive but everything just falling apart so quickly once the zealots were inside the main he has a few lurkers out here there's no you know dragoon tech yet we don't have that big army yet but bisu is making his way up that direction he's already got all his gateways online he's got a great probe saturation here all he needs to do is just focus on adding on more and more goons he's even building a bunch of cannons here just in case we were going to see a mutilus transition from zealot but i don't even know if we have the spire do we i don't think so i don't think he has a spire no uh, I, I thought maybe he would do some kind of lurker drop play but um i don't think he can even go for that anymore i think he's uh in pure passive mode until he sets up again um, but i think the idea maybe would have been a lurk contained into lurker drop into the main base but i don't think he, there's no way he can even go for that anymore so it's just going to be him desperately trying to cling on for the next like four minutes not die to the push from bisu and then try and transition into a late game but I, and maybe maybe somehow win in the very later stages of the game but there's no way i don't think he's winning this game in the next say like five to six minutes i think it's impossible for him to win yeah, he's just going to be playing on the back foot here, adding on some drones back that he lost from that fight in the natural. Yeah, even pulling the drones there to, to defend the gap between the natural and the main, to defend the choke would have been much preferable to what actually happened in that fight. And lose another overlord here, but he's not supply blocked at all. He's got plenty of lurkers to defend, but he's just in such... A rough defensive position here. He's got to defend the left and the right. And there's Storm coming in as well. I think Bisu can just topple this no problem. He's got 50 supply advantage. And a lot of that is in Dragoons. A lot of that is in all these Templar here as well. Even just skirmishing with this is going to be nearly deadly. Because he's going to lose so many Hydras here uh, to these Storms. That maybe Bisu can just, you know, overwhelm him here. Oh, great storms to start this fight off. He lost a lot of the Zealots already to all these uh, Lurkers that are in quite a nice arc. But he can retreat back to the high ground, send in a few more Zealots at a time. Some of these Dragoons getting targeted down, but from the high ground, they do fight very well. Bisu going to back off for now, realize... Oh, we do have some drops, so he was lifting up some drops. Maybe, you know what? Maybe he can do something with the... Uh, with maybe not a mass drop into the main but maybe a lurker drop yeah i mean i know oh it's gonna be a doom drop he's crazy how could he this is absolutely nuts from zealot right now he wants to do a base trade scenario i don't know how he's gonna go for this i think this is just a hail mary attempt he's just rolling the dice he knows how far behind he is he knows he has to do something crazy it's just unfortunate for him that bisu pulled the trigger so soon it's already just hammering down on his gates there's not not, not a lot to defending back at home as well he's trying to desperately hold on with a few hydras he's gonna lose this hatchery and drones almost instantly as his doom drop is incoming right now and bisu knows it's coming as well because the army's not engaging so here comes the jupiter right now because some storm in position gonna be blanketing these zirconists as they hatch out and doing a lot of damage to them there is a lot of hydras and lurkers here but i don't think it's going to be a detrimental enough uh, situation for bc to recover he's going to be able to easily clear up these units eventually and not get the damage that zealot needs to come back to this game it's going to be his last ditch attempt and he's going to be failing and coming up short here soon i mean even if he killed the entire main 
this army out here is going to kill the main, uh, the main of the Zerg, and it could also go over and kill the third as well. So this this was a no-win situation here for Zealot. He taps out. Bisu takes down another Zerg player. It's getting rough here. Protoss looking to be on the warpath once again. Maybe going to take another week of KCM. The final hope for Terran. Light here spawning in the bottom right. Bisu in the top right. We are on that brand new map. Citadel. For this last PVT match. Potentially of the night. I guess we could get another one if Light manages to win here. And win against Zerg. We could see him go. That final match versus Mini. But... For now, got to focus on this game. And I think a lot of these players' focus has been broken by the fact that the qualifiers are coming up pretty soon. A lot of these guys got qualifier brain as ASL quals are just around the corner, just two to three days away. February 3rd and February 4th in Korea. Uh, it's a kind of a show and prove moment, right? A lot of these guys... Uh, are probably pretty nervous about whether they can make it in or not. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is what these guys live for. So, you know, practicing all year round. And it finally comes time for your qualifiers. It's, it's nerve-wracking. And they, they, their mind's going to be obsessing over it for sure. And I might factor into these KCM games here today. I do like the fact that it's Bisu versus Light. I think this is uh, Light's best hope here. I don't think he would have as much chance against Best and Mini, but... I think Bisu here might just be the, the challenger that he needs to go up against to finally build some momentum and get some steam going for Terran. But uh, I'm not so sure that will transpire. This is a tough, tough map for Team Terran. So, yeah, we'll have to see if he can navigate his way into securing a third base or somehow killing Bisu with just two. But so far, I'm not sure how Light will want to approach this, this matchup and this map. But we've seen um, Mong try and take the side base rather than taking this mural only. And we... So I would like to try and take them in only when he played on this map and didn't have such such success. So I'm curious how he'll want to approach the map this time around, Sam. Right, and we got Bisu here sending a cross scout. Oh, he's doing an end scout and it's going to be the worst possible outcome. Sending the probe from the bottom left up to the top left. And he's going to find Light at the very last moment. But Light is playing completely normal. Not pulling out anything strange or weird here, just... Building a couple of marines, going into a factory. And uh, Bisu, you know, he's doing a pretty conservative play as well. So nothing crazy going to come out here. And Bisu having this super late scout, not going to hurt him too much. Yeah, seems like there's going to be a goon range expand from Bisu here. Nothing crazy. And uh, likewise, Light going to be trying to optimize his one factory expand play. Going to be coming out on a little bit of these marines initially to try and catch this delayed probe scout. He knows the probe is en route right now and can catch it. He's just trying to get in position to do that, but Bisu snaking around the north-hand side of that ridge. Not going to be caught. Might catch his SCV. It does catch the SCV. So the, the SCV will eventually be caught by the Dragoon, uh, potentially, but the marines are here to bully that back, so that guarantees the kill on the SCV, and that's a nice little play from Bisu there. Getting a little bit of damage on these marines as well is a nice little uh, win for him. Didn't get any shots off on this marines is a big, big win for Bisu. Yeah, we're gonna snipe this marine for free as well. He's losing a little bit of hold points here, now he needs to be a little bit careful. He gets the second marine, 30 HP left on this Dragoon set. He's gonna kill all three marines with one Dragoon, that's crazy. And we went for the machine shop as well, so... No Vulture out here. Oh, wait, there's the Vulture. It did slip out during the chaos there before. I thought that that was actually an SCV that was heading out on the map. But a Vulture did manage to slip out. It does get blocked by the Dragoon as it's coming into the natural. So no kills for that. And it will back off here. But yeah, that would be uh, that would actually be quite strange in the current meta not to put out a Vulture um, before putting on that, right, before getting that machine shop. And so he well, usually, does just about sneak in there. And go ahead, Shin. Usually you will, yeah, usually you will see that vulture them helping the marine, shaving off the shields, and guaranteeing the win of that fight. But Light was trying to cut corners. He was trying to win the fight with the dragoon with the three marines while the vulture was sneaking out and disguising the fact that he even made the vulture, wanting to make him think that he was going for some kind of siege expand or machine shop first play. And yeah, really kind of trying to meta game beast there. Beast just having none of it and just shut that down right away. Didn't lose anything to that harassment uh, attempt from Light, and even lost all three of his marines 
wins for that and the only thing to, to show for it is this low hp dragoon as we can see now 14 hp but he's got his three armbands right now you know he's been promoted to sergeant dragoon he's got three kills on his uh, stripes so sergeant marine dragoon here just gonna be hanging out in the wall waiting for this next vulture to make its way forward and he is going to get some mines down over here at the 12 o'clock while moving out with a uh, pretty good force of marines and uh, and tanks here it's got to be tempting to try and pick off that one dragoon but there's a lot more behind this i think seeing that number of dragoon yeah immediately going to turn around very important that he yeah. sent that scv first if he did take the engagement with that uh, Dragoon number, he would have been completely overwhelmed and lost these tanks. Yeah, he would have needed at least three tanks, plus the Marines that died earlier to be safe there, and he did not have either of those things, so very wisely going to be back in a way. If he did have those three Marines from earlier, maybe he'd have the confidence to still push forward just a little bit, but honestly, it's not really worth it at this stage in the game. He's kind of just trying to catch Bisu being greedy, and Bisu's not being greedy. Those production facilities are operational 24-7, just churning out those dragoons observer now making his way towards the main base of light as well going to be sneaking into there seeing exact tech choices and times oh look at these mine detonations though the way the mines were spread apart gave perfect splash surface area to actually kill a dragoon really nice the police placed mines there from light a nice little trap that got sprung by those goons and that's going to be annoying for bisu actually Going to be compensating a little bit for those Marines dying earlier on. Going to be transitioning straight into Arbiter Tech as well is um, Bisu. Very early two-base Arbiter play before throwing down this third. Yeah, Bisu not expecting there to be additional mines, thinking there was just one uh, blocking the Nexus there. He finds out the hard way that Light set a nice little trap for him, and now with quite a few of these dragons having been picked off light has the option to do another sort of uh earlier push here you now if he continues to pump away with two dry or uh, with two factories and just rally forward vultures maybe he can take a quick win picking off one of these dragons already and you can already see the weakness from uh, be uh from from bisu here he just doesn't have the dragon number that he needs to take this on oh great block there not allowing vultures to slip by but his third base has been delayed heavily now. Look at all the money he's got banked up. He should be throwing down nexuses like crazy. He's just not able to push forward and actually take those. He's just going into Arbiter here, and it's on two bases. I think that Light has completely stolen the show right now. Yeah, he's really delayed the traditional play of Bisu. Two-base Arbiter is strong, but you also need to throw down this third base as well. And he's now just eight minutes going to be throwing that down. It's a little bit delayed. He still will have a very strong Arbiter timing. He'll have stasis available around 11 minutes and will be able to put on a lot of pressure. And we'll be making a couple of Dark Templars as well to be a little bit sneaky out on the map as well. Seeing if he can get something done at a shuttle being made. So maybe, just maybe, he can sneak some Dark Templars into the main base of uh, Light while the, the, the battle's kicking off and just completely distract him and disrupt him, force him to deal with two locations at once and use that to give himself a small tactical edge in this battle to come. Uh, is this a shuttle with two DTs in it? All right, the DT is going to be dropped out, but unfortunately mine there oh a great mine in the middle of all of that deals a lot of damage to some of these tanks and kills off some units but uh, the dt's have been kind of shut down right now he's starting to build turrets he doesn't have comsats though this is a little bit brutal for uh, light to deal with yeah, it means it's going to take him a long time to build this CC on location at the third. Bisu just wants to slow down this third as much as possible. And he knows that um, Light wants to take this three o'clock because Light wants to push on the vertical axis and defend and attack simultaneously. Uh, and he, but the problem without the commsats is going to be really tough for him to deal with these arbiters coming up as well. So I'm wondering if he might just be checkmated by these arbiters if Bisu can keep his army small enough. Like, if he's, he's delayed the third, if he can snipe off a few units, um, and he does a good job of keeping the tank count low when he does engage, I, I feel like maybe Bisu can uh, crush later still. And he's delaying this, this, this third going down so long right now. Yeah, he's done a really good job with the DT. Um, I thought he was going to be more aggressive with them, but just picking off the SCV over and over again does slow down things a lot for Light. Um, the comsat's going to come up. If he can force 
a couple of scans out here. I think you might be right. You know, having the Arbiter out and the scan energy very, very low on these commsats could be a recipe for disaster for Light. He might end up losing his entire army uh, to just some well-positioned Zealots and, uh, and that Arbiter. Gonna throw down the fourth base here. Did manage to hide that probe. It was a little bit funny. He definitely saw that there was a probe there, but maybe he thought his eyes did deceive him. He left it alive in the top right-hand corner of the base, and now Bisa going to get this base in the top left up. He's looking forward to a long game here, but does Light have that uh, as a priority? Is he going to take a fourth base, or does he just want to max out quickly and try to take a big fight here, try to win the game before we get into that late game state? Yeah, I, I, we're going to be seeing, I wonder, I think it's going to be a stasis timing as opposed to a recall timing. Like usually the stasis finishing an energy ready about 11.20, 11.30 and a recall would be a lot later, like closer to 13 minutes in this situation. So I have imagine we've gone straight into stasis and we've got a nice little wall of supply depots here from light just trying to keep the beast at bay as best as he can. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. This Arbiter will provide so much tactical advantage to um, Bisu here. It's going to be a real rough situation for Terran to be able to hold on. There's going to be enough units to bowl over this vision. There is a mine set up on the ridge. These tanks are entrenched quite nicely with these cliff edges, but the goons can still get on top of those tanks from the ridge line and pelt them. So it will still be a, a really tough hold for Terran. And right now, Protoss is surging up to a maxed army, and Light is still struggling to get up to that 140 supply mark, which is usually the, the benchmark you need to be able to weather the storm of a maxed army Protoss. Yeah, sometimes can be even closer to 160, but Light's not going to have that supply just yet. There's the max from Bisu, and he's escorting his probes up to the top left. Um, the the Great Wall of Light here, just above this, uh, this screenshot, kind of answers my question, I guess, that we are going to have uh, Light try to make his way into a fourth base and take this game along. Uh, he wouldn't want to, you know block that direction oh, oh my god he's gonna recall right on top of the tanks what yes. a crazy play dropping all these zealots right on top of this he's gonna crush the tank line that is wild dragoons coming forward here cr getting through all of these mines so quickly bisu just annihilated this position i have never seen something quite like that before this is like a almost StarCraft 2 way of approaching the game, but when Terrans are being really lackluster with the anti-air like that, you can just recall on top of their army. It's a great method. It's not really used that much. It's starting to become slightly popularized, but you don't see it very often, especially not in pro games. So, yeah, Light didn't have any ranged Goliaths or anything there, so... And those turrets are definitely not going to be able to shoot down an Arbiter in time. Just ask Artosis. Yeah, the... Uh, traditional way of playing is to recall into the main base, but I often get comments from people saying, why don't they just recall on top of the army? And I mean, it's looking like a pretty decent strategy here. He was able to annihilate that army. Does need to pull back away from these tanks. Don't lose too many. Um, because Light will make his way back in this game if you give him an inch. But right now, Bisu is miles ahead. He's got double... Stargate here, pumping out Arbiters like crazy. He's going to have Stasis and Recall at this point in the game. And, I mean, this next base is coming out for Light. He's going to take the Mineral only now. Uh, just kind of like a backup measure. He doesn't have the Great Wall anymore. He doesn't have all the Supply Depots up uh, north of this. But he will reset that up once again. And eventually make his way up to a max supply unless we have another crazy recall here from Bisu. And that looks like what we're about to have happen here. He's going to go for the main or is he just going to go for this third? I like this better. Going for the uh, center right base. Just going after that um, command center. Uh, it's not as like satisfying as doing a massive recall into the main. But I think it's uh, tactically a lot more sound. He might actually pick this off. He's focusing it down. 86. 20, he does get it. Nicely done. I'm, su 
I'm surprised you didn't send at least one SCV to try and repair that, but I can understand in the moment too hard to control all these things at once. But yes, yeah, really rough situation for Light right now. The game has, he, since he's lost so many of these tanks, they, his army has basically been reset. He can't really hope to kill Bisu unless Bisu makes an error. So right now he's going to be in more late game focus mode. He wants to split the map in half, but right now I don't think Bisu is going to allow that to happen either. We've got another rally point being set up in the top left quadrant of the map that's going to make it even harder for Light to ever have hopes of winning this game because he can't just contain one rally point anymore. And with these backdoor stasis and sorry, backdoor recalls going on over and over again, he can't really afford to move out anytime soon. So right now it looks like Terran's going to be playing defense for the foreseeable future and try and slow this game down a little bit. Maybe start to expand and split the map in half and try for a late game win there. But I really don't see Light winning anytime soon. Yeah, uh, Light is going to have to go to a fourth base, maybe even a fifth base if he wants to take this game. And a lot of tanks are unseized here, just sitting at a rally point, unfortunately. He doesn't have the scan just yet. Bringing forward some science vessel, but gets immediately stasis there. Great stasis on top of all of this. The Dragoons are going to shove forward and actually kill this command center, it looks like. Zealot's still flowing forward. Getting on top of a lot of these tanks, and Light is just out of this game. He has no shot of holding this off, and GG is called. Light taps out. Bisu defeats the final Terran player and gives them third place once again. Oh my gosh, this line graph is going to be straighter than ever here after week number four. I think that we're going to see a Protoss first place once again. We'll have to see what Queen has to say about that. Our final Zerg player here, Queen. He's going to be the hope for us casters that we're going to be able to get a, a future game here. If we're going to be able to go all the way uh, in this week, we need to see a Queen victory. So he can go up against Mini in the final, the final game, but... Beast has just been looking really, really good this week. And now on this map, Troy, he could get super aggressive here. He could get super aggro. Try to, you know, mess around with the queen uh, here in the natural. We've got those two assimilators that can become a real problem if the opponent is going for something like a two gate. If they're going for a lot of early zealots. Blocking that natural is super powerful, and then also killing off the assimilators turns your base into an island. He's actually going for a forge, okay. So a more conservative play here out of Bisu. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I wasn't necessarily expecting that either. Um, curious. I was maybe even expecting a two gate out of Bisu to try and take advantage of this map, but maybe he feels very confident that he can take on Queen in a very standard game and doesn't need to abuse this uh, map. Could have been instead just a blocking the natural hatchery going down and frustrating queen indirectly it's dirty all right queen just gonna drop a hatchery to the uh to the left of where he wants to put his hatchery so that's just gonna be a macro hatch in the future um he's probably expecting the two gate as well mind you mm -hmm. um and you know this might actually really work out well for bisu because he blocked the the natural he forced the hatchery into a weird position um he forced, you know, four lings with the early pool here, uh, to, just in case, you know, that there was that two gate play. So, I, I mean, uh, this is a pretty good spot for him now, right? He's got the cannon almost done. He's got his uh, nexus on the way. And it's already kind of a, a bad start here for Queen, whereas Bisu is going to be feeling completely comfortable up on his high ground. This, this is all because it's cross map because queen scouted him so late he had to respect the fact that it could have been two gate and now we have this awkward moment where he was forced to throw down this hatchery in an awkward position and everything's a little bit suboptimal for queen he can still navigate uh into a, a fairly okay mid game from here but it's definitely awkward uh, you you want to be as mid max as possible in these matches so being off just a little bit is annoying and he's off a lot right now yeah, this feels like a real good like well thought out a build from Bisu. He's um, thinking from the Zerg perspective really well. Uh, you know, realizing what they're going to be afraid of, like what they're going to be uh, forced to do on this map, and uh, utilizing that to his advantage. Oh, he's going to lose this probe. Probe's going to go down here. 
There it is. He does get that. So at least getting rid of the probe, getting rid of the scouting information for Bisu, is, that's at least something. And he's throwing down this hatchery over at another natural expansion. So Queen, I mean, are we just going to see a turtle play here out of him? That's kind of what it's feeling like with four hatcheries already. I think we're going to see a lot of drone production followed up by, you know, an evolution chamber uh, and no spire in this game. Oh, absolutely, because he went four hatcheries before gas. So he's trying to compensate right now. He's trying to like say, OK, you kind of got me, but I'm going to go four hatchery before gas, get this third up a little bit earlier than I would usually be able to. But I'm going to take a slightly delayed gas and negate going early spire. Right. And then get into a quicker carapace upgrade. Defend on high ground, get into a quick four four base play, and maybe you know take it to a late game a hive play um, can be a really strong way to navigate a strange ZVP like this. And I'm gonna spot this base pretty quick on, but um, Bisu just gonna hide behind the mineral patches for now. We do have quite a few lings coming up here to respond to this annoyance here. Over at his base, but there you go. He's going to utilize the, the assimilators right now. And actually, I wouldn't mind him trying to kill one of those assimilators. You know, force a timer on here. Um, start dealing damage to those assimilators so that maybe later he can cut them off. He can kill them and make it harder for Queen to actually take uh, that fourth base up in the top right. Yeah, it does put the pressure on the Zerg to react to it, but the only issue is, is that you have to watch the Zealots always. If the Lings come in, they get hits on it for free. If it's mm. distracted, attacking the Assimilator, obviously. So it said Bisu is going to be annoying. As well. Comes down, catches the drone, saying that's so annoying. Any damage to the Zerg at this stage of the game can feel catastrophic, especially when it's for free like that. Really not going to be happy with that. The Matriarchy going to be so frustrated. Yeah, Queen. I mean, there he is. He's going to start to attack the uh, assimilators now. He sees the Hydralisk. Uh, this is just a Hydralisk for the defense of the overlords, though. We're not going to see, I think, a massive bust here coming out uh, against Bisu, but Bisu does have to compensate for that. He's got to be careful uh, not to get busted here, so he will have to build some more cannons on high ground. Probably not too many. High ground is very, very strong against these Hydra busts, so... You know, you add on a couple extra cannons and, you know, get into the next stages of this game. Wow, he's actually not building any more cannons here. Very confident. I think he might be able to kill him, actually. If, if Queen makes pure Hydra right now, I think he can actually kill Bisu. Yeah, this is scary. You do have to respect this. Okay, two cannons uh, coming down here right at the front of the wall. Third cannon coming as well. He's got quite a lot of Zealots, and I think they have speed as uh, uh, in addition, so... That does help a lot to deal with these uh, Hydras. And he is going to run up here, try to get this around. Oh, he perfectly surrounds four Hydras, picking them all off. He is not going to bust this position now. And actually, Bisu could probably cancel a bunch of these cannons. That's a really big mistake from Queen, because Bisu didn't even get the surround that quickly on those Hydras. So really a uh, slight execution error there from Queen, not saving those. So a little bit of a surprise, but instead now Bisu is going to be surging forward. There is a Sunken here to kind of buffer, So, he, but there's not really um, a much way he can still survive this. The Zealot still can come in here and do a lot of damage and force the drones to come out and fight, and then he can trade off the units and maybe kill a few of these drones in the process as well. So good new situation going uh, Bisu's way here while more and more Zealot streamlining in. Not going to be happy with this is the Matriarch as he tries to do it. So far has done an okay job at mopping up some of these Zealots, but the cleanup on Alpha is still not without its uh, caveats and unfortunately for him he has lost a lot of mining time a few drones in the process and it's still taking time to clear this up well bisu back at home could be macroing up to his mid-game army that he needs he's getting his templar tech online right now so he's buying a lot of time by just making sure there's no hope that queen can come here and bust the front down and that will allow bisu to go into a mid-game like unscathed Queen holds on to some positions that I just don't understand. Like, I don't know how he didn't lose more during all of that chaos, but he managed to save a reasonable number of drones. A DT is going to sneak in here now, but we've got Overlords plus a Sunken Colony, so it should be okay. Um, yeah, there's the DT sneaking in now, but with the Sunken Colony here, yeah, you just kind of have to back away. Coming up towards this high ground, we do have Templar here, but do they have Storm? They should at this point in the game. But uh, I don't think Queen's even going to test it out. 
Yeah, around about 8 minutes 30, you can start to assume that Storm is going to be online. The standard timing is closer to 8.45, 8.50, but it um, looks like we're creating a uh, an semi-island over here. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, Queen's got some forethoughts about that that you should clue us in on. But uh, it looks like both players are trying to see... It looks like Queen's also trying to take out the, the, the 12 o'clock in that same way as well, maybe denying transfers or i don't know actually maybe he's just trying to be tactical here and delay the third base options of bisu but i'm not too sure that's going to be fruitful yeah we've got a robotics coming on the way now um queen's kind of stabilized here but the push out i mean it's nice to have sunkins on high ground but if there's enough zealous coming up here and uh, Templar as well, to throw down storms on the drone line and the hydras that are defending, it's going to be really hard. He actually needs a lot more sunkens here. If this is the play that he wants to go for. This is a really turtled position while going into a fourth base. He actually needs way more sunken colonies. He needs like four or five sunken colonies at each base, plus a bunch of lurkers in order to hold on to everything because Bisu is building... Dragoons now. He's got a lot of zealots out here. It's like this lurker's gonna head up towards the 12 o'clock. But I mean, this is wow. this is one of the smallest parts. This is this is one of the the big parts of the defense. Um, and it, I mean, the defense over at the top right is very brittle right here. He's got two sunkins. He's gonna try and add a third. But uh, it's looking dangerous right now for Queen. Man, I would not be feeling good right now if I was in this position as a Zerg player with this big army wandering around and you don't have enough defense here on the high ground it's brutal well queen is forcing bisu to take this island as his third if he wants to get this early third which forced him to make a shuttle which is less observers which means he's not going to be able to bust as easily so i guess he's trying to be as tactful as possible he did pull the army to the 12 o'clock while doing that and did buy him some time if bisu just ignored that lurker and went straight for him maybe bisu had a window there to just kill him uh, just before those other lurkers had hatched but Anyway, Queen is surviving for the time being, and had a big attack coming in up this ramp. So many Zealots and High, uh, high Templars with Dragoon supporting, and he might be able to just come in and cross the position, but there's a good spread of Lurkers in a big arc, so he might be able to hold on to here and get a lot of damage done onto these Zealots, but beautiful Storms from Bisu going to be dealing with that nicely, and the Dragoon's there to pepper and finish off those Lurkers, but a big flood of Hydras coming in from the rear, and some Blankets of Storms going to be targeting those down as best as he can hope, but so far in full Pandemonium mode in this natural expansion uh, in the top right, going to be having to evacuate the drones coming off the line to deal with the zealots and body block and there's more lurkers coming in to try and support this but he's going to get a force round on these hydras and now bisu coming out ahead in this engagement while more rallied units coming across to reinforce say it looks like it's lights out for queen here yeah queen i mean he's missing a few parts of this defense like one of the big things that you can see is missing here is the wall like we've got just a kind of an open gap in the middle of that high ground uh, where the Zelts were easily able to pour in and just start targeting down those sunken colonies. And that's not something that you, you, you want to be possible for the, for the Protoss player. You want to have like a couple of Evo chambers there in the front. Something to actually block the Zealots out and make it hard for them to path in easily. And uh, he just didn't have that there. He was behind really from the early parts of the game the strategy from bisu was fantastic here on troy it's going to be really interesting to see what zerg can come up with in the asl and in future weeks of the kcm to actually deal with those type of plays from protoss on this map yeah for the time being though it's going to be a tough nut to swallow for a team terran and team zerg here as yet again the pusagi reigning supreme zone here we are in the point rankings with a decidedly straight score screen. And this, I, I don't know how much longer this can go on, Shun. This is a, a perfectly symmetrical graph or a perfectly linear graph here with Protoss utter domination and Terran just not even showing up. There's not even a hope that they can get into the, the, the finals in first place anymore. There's, there's no way that they can make their way directly in the finals. They have to start preparing for the semis. Yeah, it's going to be a TVZ finals preparation for the Terrans. Uh, currently, as you can see on the board, we've got this very distinct trend. It's basically the hand of God, and we got the, the P sign going up to the world there, and the middle finger being given to the Terrans, and uh, kind of very related to real life, kind of hits hard there. Uh, it would be nice to see uh, Zerg be able to fight for pro fight Protoss for that, that final spot, though. Over the next four weeks, it's still doable for them, so... 
with that four point gap, it's still a little bit of hope there for Zerg, but with the likes of Bisu and Mini, still a daunting hill to climb for them. I think that Terran will still show up here because every week of KCM, uh, there is money on the table. You can take home some cash prize for each win uh, for your team. But looking at this graph, I just realized I don't think that KCM ever imagined that we were going to have a situation like this. And if we go all the way to week eight with Protoss uh, only having victories, I think we're going to actually be off the screen. Like We're going up so high. It's going to be above point ranking by the time we get to the end of this. Yeah, I mean, they're going off the charts, into the stratosphere, out of space. I mean, they are the space-faring race, so I'd like to see how far they can go. But we're going to have to maybe adjust the graph, I think, saying, or something. Yeah, Protoss way ahead of the curve here in KSCM, and it's making me worried for Terran and ASL as well going into that. Guys, I just want to mention that we do talk about ASL sometimes, but my promise to you is that we will not do any sort of uh, spoilers for the ASL. We will talk about it peripherally, but we will not spoil any of the results. We're waiting for the Tastosis cast as well. At least I am. Yeah, I will be waiting for the Tastosis cast as well, for sure. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're in the same boat as you guys. We're watching out, making sure that we don't get spoiled for the ASL results. So we will keep that spoiler, or we will keep this stream spoiler free. So don't worry about that here, guys. KCM, completely separate event, but of course influenced by the ASL in some ways. All right, and with that, this week of KCM is over, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to go down to the description box, check out KCM's original video, hit up Shun's stream as well. This, this cast was streamed on Shun's channel, as are all casts done by Shun and myself. He's also playing a bunch of different games. I'm in there with him sometimes as well. He's doing CPL, uh, doing coaching as well for uh, StarCraft Brood War and some other games. So definitely go check that out. I'm going to be streaming here coming up soon. So that should be a whole lot of fun. I've got the setup. I'm just dialing it in now. We're going to start doing some streaming here. So guys, stay tuned for more great content from Brood War, from us, from Shun and myself. And we'll see you in the next cast. Thanks, guys.